welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Fit Friday. <laughs> I got a lot of questions from you guys as well um, on Instagram and also on Twitter. So I'm gonna be talking or answering some of your questions as well. And Odin wants to be in the video, I guess. Too. <laughs> I'm actually babysitting or dog sitting another dog of our, of my in-laws. So my parents-in-law are in, um, are on holiday, so we have a second dog, she's sleeping over there. So a lot of you guys actually had a questions regarding how things were when I was on holiday, because I took a break for about a month. I was in Canada, and if you guys haven't checked out my um, Canada vlogs, you can do that. During that time, I wasn't in my regular kind of thing, you know, I wasn't working out as much, but what I did make a point of doing is I took my workout stuff with me. So I took my running shoes, I took workout clothing with me um, because I knew that in Vancouver I was going to be eating a lot of different foods that I don't get to eat here. I always like indulge in sushi when I'm over there. I'm, I'm a huge sushi fiend. I just didn't want to, you know, go on holiday and be like, oh no, I can only eat, you know, chicken and salad and stuff like that. So I went on runs very frequently because in the in the beginning when I got there I had like very horrible jet lag which is very common because it's a nine hour time change. I would be getting up at five o'clock or six o'clock six o'clock in the morning which I know to some people that is the normal time they get up but I don't tend to get up that early so I would really take advantage and I would get up right away and I went for a run and then I also did the grouse grind which is one of the toughest trails it's known in Canada or like in Western Canada like people know the grouse grind and it's always been one of my goals to do it so basically to those of you guys who don't know um, grouse mountain there's this mountain just on like near Vancouver it's like in North Van there's a trail that goes from the base of the mountain all the way to the top to the summit you can take a gondola up and when you're at the top there's like this beautiful view over Vancouver and you see the ocean and stuff it's just really pretty up there there is a trail that goes up and a lot of people call it nature stairmaster because it literally is super super steep and in many places it is like a proper staircase that they've built in but it's in a very natural setting so all the stairs are like made of wood so that trail is really famous because it's super super steep in a very short amount of time i think it's like 860 meters like elevation meters so it's just super steep and a lot of people do the grouse grind instead of going to the gym because it is a super cardio workout it's it works your muscles and a lot of people try to beat their best time doing it and i it was the first time i'd ever done it because often when i've been in vancouver it's been in the winter and the trail is closed in the winter um so it was the first time i'd ever done it and i had an hour and 13 minutes so i thought that was pretty good it is a very tough trail so it isn't something that i would recommend to total beginners so yeah i did work out in vancouver um when we were on our road trip it wasn't really really possible for me to work out because you know we'd be camping in areas and it's not like you know after the whole day of traveling and you know setting up camp like i'm gonna go and run around and also it's it could be dangerous because it was like in the forest there are bears there where we camped <laughs> i wasn't going crazy with food but i was just eating you know whatever i wanted but i think maybe my tastes have changed also a little bit which i thought was interesting because at some point i was like i cannot eat another burger but after like the third or fourth burger i was like okay i am done i cannot eat a single more burger <laughs> i was just at some point i was just ready to just eat normal again for me normal is just eating a bit healthier and it's just it's that's my normal now when i came back from holiday um, I went on a scale and I'd really only gained, I think it was like two kilograms or one and a half kilograms. So it wasn't very much. I was really jet lagged when I came back, which really sucked, but I started working out again. I started just eating normally again, how I eat. And I dropped that weight really fast. At 10 days or two weeks maximum, it was com I was completely back to my regular weight. But now what I've found is I'm like stuck on a plateau. I like, let's just Okay, just to preface this, I feel really happy how far I've come. I mean, I feel like I've dropped, I've dropped a lot of weight, but I've definitely like my body has changed. Like I feel like my face has just gotten slimmer. Like my hands are thinner, um, my arms are thinner. Like I just, I look more like myself again. I feel like I, you know, when I gained the weight back, I just, I just wasn't feeling like myself. So much healthier. Um, 
you know, I feel like I can move better with my body, like doing physical activity is fun again and I, I'm still going to CrossFit, I'm going three times a week again, I enjoy it, I love going, it's fun, like I look forward to my workout sessions there and I, I love challenging myself, so that's like really good. I've just hit this plateau and I think anyone who does a weight loss and fitness journey at some point will reach a plateau where it's just, you. it's really hard to see any kind of uh, progress. I would like to have less fat on my body. <laughs> through the crossfit and through doing weights and stuff like that, I know I've built up muscle because I can feel it. Like I can feel the muscle, like, you know, if I go like this, like, okay, I'm wearing a shirt now, but if I go like this, you know, I can feel there's muscle that's built up and like in my legs and stuff, I feel so much stronger and I know I'm stronger because I keep being able to lift more and heavier and stuff. I would like to see the definition more and at this point it's, it is kind of more on an aesthetic level and also I'm going through the body mass index. So the body max, mass index is a, a range that helps you kind of determine if you are underweight, normal weight and overweight and then there's like morbid obesity category above that. I was in the overweight range and I am just now on the cusp of being back into like normal weight for my size. Like I'm just like a little bit over. I want to be back in that like normal BMI and I'm just like over it a little bit. I feel like now I'm just like at this level where I just don't see anything happening and that's normal. At some point you will reach a plateau and I would just like to lose a bit of the excess body fat because I know I have muscles underneath and I would just like to see that. I don't want that extreme like no fat at all look because personally this is just my opinion. I personally don't feel that looks that great. Women are have more body fat anyway and it's healthy for women to have body fat. So I, I don't mind having some fat but I would just like to see a bit of the definition and the results that I know are stuck underneath, but it's just a little bit harder to see them because there's this layer of fat on top. And like I said, I am still a little bit over the BMI. I think what I need to start doing is tracking actually my calories. I have done it before, but I have never done it consistently. There's like online sources where you can find out how many calories that you need just to be able to like exist and do everything. For that one, you need to put in your age, your height and your weight, and then it calculates and your gender, and then it calculates um, roughly about how many calories you need. Oh, and you also put in the amount of physical activity to do. So if you're like sedentary lifestyle, um, moderate activity, and then like heavy activity. So that also depends on your job. I'm just gonna tell you guys, but it's gonna be different for everyone. So for the amount of activity that I do and my age and weight and everything and height, it says that I need about 2,200 calories per day. According from that, you can, you know, kind of deduct how many, how many calories you wanna be in deficit um, to lose weight because that's really weight loss is all about calories in calories out like I mean yes there are other factors as well you want to make sure that you're eating a balanced diet to lose fat you need to be burning more calories obviously than you're in taking in I'm pretty sure that when I was actively losing weight I was really following more of a low carb plan and I wasn't counting calories but I'm sure that I was actually still in a caloric deficit because um, I was just eating less like snacks and stuff like I'd cut out snacking and I'd cut out all this other additional stuff I am not doing solely low carb anymore. I feel like I want to add carbohydrates back in It's not like I wasn't eating any I just wasn't eating as much I guess I was eating more fats and proteins rather than carbohydrates So what I want to do now is just switch up I think I just need to make some kind of a dietary change So what I did is I downloaded an app called chronometer and the chronometer app, it's its a free app. You can do a paid version, you get more features, but the free version works fine for me. Um, this is not sponsored by chronometer <laughs> at all. There's lots of apps. There's like my fitness pal is another one. It has like a good built in sort of catalog of all different kinds of food. So you can just basically put in like, like for example, yesterday, it has here everything that I ate. You can like scroll up and see how much everything is, like how many calories it is. And not only does it track calories, it also tracks all the vitamins and nutrients and um, macros so it'll track how many how much protein how much fat and how much um, 
carbs you're eating. So like yesterday, for example, I ate 1,266 calories, fat, carbs, and proteins. And for me, it was an even split. Then it said how many calories are burned. Now, the only thing is when you eat this way is you need to really weigh out everything that you're eating um, or so have some kind of measurement. So like, let's say in the morning when I have my coffee and I put not the milk in there, I have to measure how much actual milk I'm putting in the coffee. I have a scale, I have a digital scale. I put it on the scale and as I pour on milk, it counts how many grams or milliliters of milk it milk it is but then I can put it in you know if you're putting oil in a pan you have to like measure it out by the spoonful like I use like maybe half a teaspoon so I can put it in so I know exactly how many calories are in that basically anything you have to measure it because the measurement you have to put in how much of that whatever food that you're eating so that it can calculate how many calories it takes a bit longer to prepare the meal because you can't just like throw things in you need to measure everything a little bit more time-consuming it is a little bit annoying but honestly, I'm at this point where <laughs> I just really want to see the results of what I've worked hard for. I want to see the results from my CrossFit, from my weightlifting. And I would just like to lose the body fat. Not all of it, but I would just like to drop a little bit of body fat. For me, this is quite a change because, you know, I used to eat just like low carb and not watching the calories. So I would buy really high fat things. It worked for me. I, I, I lost a lot of weight. I dropped like two dress sizes and I went down and it like worked great for me. But now that I'm at a plateau, I need to like just change things up. So now I'm having to actually you look at <laughs> how many calories things have my meals are still filling like I still like to eat large meals not like super huge but just like filling meals like not like tiny portions they need to be within my caloric limit for the day. So it's kind of just a little bit different now. Like I said, I am gonna be adding in more carbohydrates in, but healthy carbohydrates. So not like sugar and like sweets and refined processed like white bread and stuff, but maybe doing like rice with my meals, oatmeal. I've like yesterday I had oatmeal after my training cause I was still like really hungry and I decided I'm gonna do carbs like after my training. So like yesterday I only ate 1200 calories which is not a whole lot to be honest. I think I can probably up that a little bit but honestly yesterday I wasn't hungrier than that. Like I ate my meals, I made my food and I was fine at the end of the night. I wasn't going to bed hungry. Maybe some days I feel super hungry and I'm going to eat 15 or 1600 calories. Maybe some days I'm not hungry like Yesterday I wasn't that hungry, it was 1200. So it's gonna, it, I guess it's gonna vary a little bit. I think it's fine to have not only health goals, but also to have aesthetic goals. Like that's totally fine. I will keep you guys updated. Maybe I was thinking of doing a what I eat in a day type of video where I kind of show you what I'm eating. So it'll kind of give you guys also an idea because I mean, some people will think, oh my God, like 1200 calories, that's like nothing or 1400 calories, 1500 calories, that's, that's nothing. But I will show you some ideas of how you can um, eat really fulfilling meals and how you can definitely like not feel hungry, not feel like you're starving yourself with that caloric limit because I've, I've done it now for a, a little bit and it's fine like you just have to make some kind of change changes on the types of ingredients that you're using okay so I had a couple questions from a few of you um, regarding the foot pain that I was experiencing the plantar fasciitis fasciitis that I had to those of you guys who don't know I had really bad foot pain so like Christmas last year it started around then for like half a year I had really bad foot pain and it was really impacting my overall like well-being it was definitely affecting my um, quality of life because it's like just imagine doing anything like going for a walk going grocery shopping whatever each time i was walking like even short distances i would just have really strong pain so the best thing i did is just go to an orthopedic doctor who made me these custom insoles so this is this is not from a doctor it's like an orthopedic dude <laughs> they customize it to your actual foot. So it was a whole process. So you go on this like machine and it measures your foot and then they custom make you these soles and then you have to go back. I went back like three times to have them readjusted. These were really expensive. These cost me like 400 and something, 450 or 480 Swiss francs. Yeah. These are 480 Swiss francs. They should last about two years. And these completely help to heal my foot pain because I wear them everywhere. So you have to wear them all the time. These are like the sport insoles because I also wear these 
um, when I do CrossFit. So I wear these in every shoe. Um, there are unfortunately some shoes where these don't fit because basically you have to, if you have any shoes like existing shoes that you had before, you have to take the, the sole out of them. Like some of them I had to like rip them out. And then some of my shoes, um, they're now like I can't fit them. It's too tight because these take up like quite a bit of volume. The physiotherapist, I just went to a physiotherapist so that wasn't really helping me very much and it cost a lot and it just, I didn't notice any results. I noticed like instant results, not instant, but very fast results when I started wearing those all the time, all the time. So another person asked me how, how to train stubborn spots like lower tummy or flabby arms. So this is something that a lot of people have the misconception that you can instantly get like toned results by working specific muscle groups and that is just wrong you can tone the muscle that's underneath you know for workout for your arms you need to do like upper body strength training you're not going to see any of the results unless you drop some of the fat that's around it so fat loss is what is going to sh give you the results that you want um not just like you need to do both you need to do strength training but you also need to lose the fat that's surrounding it so that's kind of where i'm at right now like i know there are muscles under here um but there is like fat surrounding it it's not like super flabby anymore there is like a little bit of flab but it's just like you need to lose the fat around it so basically any kind of strength training that you do you don't lose fat in like specific areas of your body this is like a misconception you know a six pack <laughs> is made in the kitchen like they said it's a lot to do with your diet you can't target fat loss in specific areas your body will lose fat according to each individual like some people have more fat you know on their upper body some people maybe store more fat in their thighs and stomach and it's different for everyone i know for me the area where i store a lot of fat is my stomach area and like arms i don't know that's kind of where i feel like i'm the chubbiest um so i know that when i lose the fat it's gonna come off everywhere it's not just gonna be like in one area and just doing like stomach crunches it's not gonna make my stomach look thinner unless i lose the fat what is your crossfit routine i'm not quite sure what this person is asking but i basically go three times a week to a guided class you go into a class there is a trainer there it's maximum 12 people in my crossfit gyms and it'll be a set workout so you're not just like working out by yourself Basically, they'll have a workout of the day portion and then they'll have like different things that you need to do and it'll be like step by step. Okay, like now we're doing this, now we're doing this, now we're doing that. So, and then everybody just does that at their own pace. You do the exercise yourself at your own pace, but it is like a guided class. And that's what I really like about it is because I have a trainer who corrects my form. My form has gotten so much better. I've been doing it now for like almost a year. I try to go like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Then I had another question, what kind of food do I miss or crave? I don't really get like super strong cravings anymore, to be honest. Like, yes, I will still enjoy now and then like something sweet or a dessert. And I do have cheat meals because you know, you want to keep it realistic. You know, sometimes you get invited to a friend's house, they'll cook something and it's not like, oh, no, I can't have this. I need to only have chicken and salad and mineral water. You know, it's like, it's totally not realistic. I guess the one thing that I could eat so much more of is bread. Oh my God, I love bread. The bread here in Europe, oh my God, you guys, it is so good. It's like, we have so many different varieties and we have like the really sort of crusty, crunchy bread with like dark, um, flour. Oh my God. It's my favorite. I suffer from really bad lower back pain and sciatica. Any advice or do's or don'ts? I'm not a doctor, so I don't want to make any recommendations. I feel like you need to first get the okay from your chiropractor or doctor, whoever is, whoever is treating you to make sure that you can even do physical exercise and to know your limits. So I'm not, I'm not going to say anything on that. Personally, as someone who has suffered from really bad back pain, um, I had a back injury several years ago. I had horrible back pain and I have noticed that the less physically physical activity I did, the worse it got. And now that I do have a regular fitness program where I strength train, especially lower back and core area. Oh my God, my back pain has gotten so much better. I used to wake up every morning with like the worst back pain. Um, just like getting out of bed was painful. Deadlifting has really helped me. Um, you need to have really good form for deadlifts. So maybe work with a trainer to teach you how to do it correctly. Oh my God, deadlifts are my favorite. There's another one called back extensions, which is, um, they're called like good morning those are really awesome if you can maybe book a session with a personal trainer get them to show you some back exercises that'll help you in a 
and start slow. Don't do like crazy amount of weight or maybe even do just without the weight to get the moves correct. Strength training, wow, has made a huge difference. And I noticed it when I stopped doing strength training for that month in Vancouver. Um, I was still working out, but I wasn't doing strength training. My back ache started to come back like near the end of the holiday. I was having back aches again, which I didn't have here when I'm doing my CrossFit and doing my workout. And you can even do strength training like doing Pilates and yoga. So you don't have to do something really crazy with weights you can do body weights i think with pilates so and then i had another <laughs> oh, dean. you want to go on a walk right you have to wait a bit how do i manage the pain when you start in the gym life haha <laughs> it's hard so i guess the question is like how do you deal with pain um, after working out now i want to distinguish between two types of pain so the one pain is muscle soreness which is very common and is okay pain. Um, and the other one is really when you have an injury. So that's something you wanna avoid. So you don't wanna overdo it, especially when, I, when you're doing weight training, it's all about form. As for like muscle soreness, that is something that is part of it. Muscle soreness is caused by tiny little tears in your muscle. And when the muscle repairs itself, it builds new muscle mass. And that's how your muscles actually grow in size. It's very like, strong in the beginning especially if you've never done like weight training or kind of resistance training body weight stuff like that if you've never done that like you will have really bad muscle soreness in the beginning but it kind of tends to get less over time like I don't really get that as much anymore and I don't know why it's still like I'm working hard like yes occasionally I'll still get it maybe if we're working a muscle group that I haven't worked out in a while but it's not as severe as it was in the beginning maybe your muscles get like more used to it i actually don't know the physiological reason for it but something that's also kind of helped me is i take sometimes a magnesium supplement or doing some kind of a recovery drink maybe can help that actually helps too it's supposed to help with muscle repair and also just maybe taking a hot bath relax your muscles after a workout also don't forget stretching you can greatly reduce muscle soreness if you do good stretching after a weight weight training sessions and then you can do kind of creams that help that kind of warm up the muscles there's like cooling or heating creams i actually really like tiger balm what do you think hmm? what do you think <laughs> yeah odin is very happy or he's very bored so I think he needs to go on a walk now. Hmm? Yeah, sweet boy. Oh, he loves hugs. <laughs> so thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed Fit Friday. Odin says goodbye too. And I'll see you for the next one. Bye.